Hello and welcome to another booktube video from me, Martha May Books, and today I have for you my most anticipated releases of 2021. This is The Shape of Darkness by Laura Purcell, comes out on the 21st of January. I read Bone China by Laura Purcell. Laura Purcell, why can I not talk? As the age of the photograph dawns in Victorian Bath, silhouette artist Agnes is struggling to keep her business afloat. Still recovering from a serious illness, making enough money to support her elderly mother and her orphaned nephew Cedric has never been easy, but then one of her clients is murdered shortly after sitting for Agnes and then another and another. Why is the killer seemingly targeting her business? And then there's a spirit medium involved. Next I've got If I Disappear by Eliza Jane Brazier and it comes out the 26th of January. When her favourite true crime podcast host goes missing, an adrift young woman plunges headfirst into the wild backcountry of Northern California and her own dangerous obsession. And then finally for January, I have Wings of Ebony by J L or J Ellie comes out on the 26th of January. It says, in this riveting, keenly emotional debut fantasy, a black teen from Houston has her world upended when she learns about her godly ancestry and with the evil sinking into it and with evil sinking its claws into humans and gods alike, she'll have to unearth the magic of her true identity to save both her worlds. I'm not a massive reader of YA fantasy, but with the right kind of story, I'll give it a go. Then on to February. My first book for February comes out the 9th of February and it is The Gilded Ones by Namina Fauna. Now this one I've heard a little bit more about. This one is another YA fantasy. It's about a 16 year old girl named Decca who in her village they do uh, like a blood test. <laughs> I'm not explaining this well. They basically have this ceremony where they judge whether you've got red blood or gold blood. And if you've got gold blood, bad things happen. And Decca has gold blood. <laughs> and finds this out. A mysterious woman comes with a choice to stay in the village and submit to her fate or leave to fight the emperor in an army of girls just like her. They are the Alaki near immortals with rare gifts they are the only ones who can stop the emperor's the empire's greatest threat. Then we've got another one by an author that I've read from before. I'm very confident in my love for which is Becky Chambers. So The Galaxy and the Ground Within comes out on February 18th and is the final book in the Wayfarers series. It follows a planet called Gora um, that has no water, no air, no native life, but it is a deep and decent stopover for ships travelling between wormholes that keep the galactic commons connected. At the five hop, one stop, long haul spacers can stretch their legs, if they have legs that is, and get fuel, transit permits and assorted supplies. The five hop is run by an enterprising alien and her sometimes helpful child who work hard to provide a little piece of home to everyone passing through. When a freak technological failure halts all traffic to and from Gora, three strangers, all different species with different aims, are thrown together at the five hop. Grounded with nothing to do but wait, the trio, an exiled artist with an appointment to keep, a cargo runner at... Why can't I read today? at a personal crossroads and a mysterious individual doing her best to keep those on the fringes are compelled to confront why they, where they've been, where they might go and what they are or could be to each other. The first book on my radar for March comes out March 2nd and is called Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Booley. So this is a YA thriller about a native teen who must root out the corruption in her community. The next one on my list also comes out on the 2nd of March. It's Yoke by Mary H.K. Choi, a funny and emotional story about two estranged sisters switching places and committing insurance for fraud to save one of their lives. Then I've got The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. A female apothecary secretly dispenses poisons to liberate women from the men who have wronged them, setting three lives across centuries on dangerous collision course. Next, also coming out on the 2nd of March is The Conductors by Nicole Glover. As a conductor on the Underground Railroad, Hetty Rhodes helped her helped usher dozens of people north with her wits and magic. Now that the Civil War is over, Hetty and her husband Benji have settled in Philadelphia, solving murders and mysteries that the white authorities won't touch. When they find one of their friends slain in an alley, Hetty and Benji bury the body and set off to find answers. But the secrets and intricate lies of the elites of black Philadelphia only serve to dredge up more questions. To solve this mystery, they'll have to face ugly truths all around them, including the ones about each other. Also coming out on the 2nd of March. 2nd of March is a 
good day for books. If you ordered all of these, you would have a fun day unboxing them. I've got In the Quick by Kate Hope Day. A young ambitious female astronaut's life is upended by a fiery love affair that threatens the rescue of a lost crew in this brilliant imagined novel in the tradition of Station Eleven and The Martian. I love The Martian. Also, the cover of this is glorious. It seems to be an adult sci-fi. Next I've got The Lamp Lighters by Emma Stonex. So this one has been on my radar for a little while because Elizabeth McNeil who wrote The Doll Factory read it on Instagram and said it was really good. So I have had it on my radar since then. This comes out on the 4th of March, is set in Cornwall 1972. Three keepers vanish from a remote lighthouse miles from the shore. The entrance door is locked from the inside. The clocks have stopped. The principal keeper's weather log describes a mighty storm, but the skies have been clear all week. And then it's about the widows of the men in the lighthouse. Then I have The Bone Maker by Sarah Beth Durst, which comes out on the 9th of March. A standalone epic fantasy set in a brand new world of towering mountains and sparkling cities in which a band of aging warriors have a second chance to defeat dark magic and avenge a haunting loss. This is an adult fantasy and it's also listed as sci-fi but I wonder if that's just Goodreads being Goodreads. Then I have The Unbroken by C.L. Clark, which comes out on the 23rd of March. Torain is a soldier stolen as a child and raised to kill and die for the Empire. Her only loyalty is to her fellow conspirators but now her company has been set back to her homeland to stop a rebellion and the ties of blood may be stronger than she thought. Luca needs a turncoat, someone desperate enough to tiptoe the bayonet's edge between treason and orders, someone who can sway the rebels towards peace while Luca focuses on what really matters, getting her uncle off the throne. Through assassinations and massacres, in bedrooms and, at war, and war rooms, Torrain and Luca will haggle over the price of a nation, but some things aren't for sale. This is tagged with fantasy, LGBT and adult. Apparently it's also set inspired by North Africa. Then I've got another one by an author that I've already read from and really enjoyed. This is Unsettled Ground by Claire Fuller and comes out on the 25th of March. What if the life you've always known is taken from you in an instant? What would you do to get it back? Not a great tagline to be honest with you, Claire. About some twins who are different and live with their mother at 50, rural isolation, a thrilling novel of resilience and hope, of love and survival that explores with dazzling emotional power how the truth's closest to us are often hardest to see. We're into April now. We're making progress. So, we're... <whistles> Pepe, can you stop licking yourself, please? I'm making a video. It's a bit rude. Be licking yourself over my video. Thank you. <laughs> he looks offended. This is my most anticipated release for 2021. I'm so excited. <laughs> this is Skin Take by Michelle Paver. It comes out on the 1st of April and is the eighth book in the Chronicles of Ancient Darkness by Michelle Paver. The Chronicles of Ancient Darkness is a children's fantasy historical fiction series set in the Stone Age. It follows Torek, Ren, Wolf and some ravens and their adventures fighting demons and bad people. In the dark time of midwinter, disaster strikes the forest. Chaos rules, bears woken from their dens prowl the shadowy valleys. Desperate clans battle survival, only demons thrive. With their world in turmoil, Torak, Ren and Wolf are tested as never before. And as a new evil haunts the devastated land, Torak must risk his sanity, his life, and even his souls to save everything he loves. I'm so excited, it's such a good series. Next, I've got coming out on the 20th of April, which is steeped in gold. First of all, that title is glorious and so is this cover. Divided by their casts, united by their vengeance. Another brilliant tagline. Irea has spent her life in a cell but every day brings her closer to freedom and vengeance. Jasmine is the queen's daughter, but unlike her sister before her, she has no intention of dying to strengthen her mother's power. Sworn enemies, these two witches, enter a precarious alliance to take down a mutual threat, but revenge is a bloody pursuit and nothing is certain except the lengths they will go to to win this game. Deadly, fierce, magnetically addictive, this Jamaican-inspired fantasy debut is a thrilling journey where dangerous magic reigns supreme and betrayal lurks beneath every word. Sign me up, this is another YA fantasy. Next, I have another book that I'm very excited for and by an author that I have read and love. This is The Metal Heart by Caroline Lee and it comes out on April 29th. I love Caroline Lee, I've read all of her books. I think she's great. This book is not really within my normal genre, but because I really like her, I'm going to give it a go. This is Orkney, 1940, on a remote island. A prisoner of war camp is constructed to house 500 Italian soldiers upon arrival, a freezing Orkney winter, that, and divided 
community greets them. Orphan sisters Dorothy and Constance volunteer to nurse the men. Dot is immediately drawn to Caesar, a young man fighting on the wrong side and broken by war and destruction. The soldiers spend their days building a secret barricade between the islands. By night, however, they construct a reminder of their native land, an exquisite chapel. As tensions between the islanders and outsiders grow, the family, the sisters' loyalty is tested. Will Dot choose love or family? Now we're going into May, which is my birthday month. So on the 4th of May, we have Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. I really enjoyed The Martian, as I said earlier. I haven't read his second book, I think it was, but I'm interested in this one. A lone astro astronaut must save the Earth. Why can't I talk? A lone astronaut must save the Earth from disaster in this incredible new science based thriller. Ryland Grace is the sole survivor on a desperate last transmission, and if he fails, humanity and the Earth itself will perish. The next book I've got on my list comes out on 11th of May and is Son of the Storm by Suyi Davies Ockenbauer and is a adult? I did not think it was adult by the cover, I thought it was YA. Um, an adult fantasy sci-fi. A young scholar's ambition, th ambition threatens to reshape an empire determined to retain its might in this epic tale of violent conquest, buried histories and forbidden magic. Sounds great to me. On June 1st, The Darkness Outsiders by Elliot Schrafer. After the first settler on the Titan, on Titan trips her distress signal, neither remaining country on Earth can afford to scramble a rescue of its own. And so two sworn enemies are installed in the same spaceship. This is a young adult LGBT science fiction. So I'm assuming it's gonna be a hate to love situation on a spaceship. Then I've got the next Becky Chambers book that comes out in 2021, it comes out on the 13th of July and I don't know if it is gonna be physical. I'm not sure it's published by Tor and I'm confused about Tor, um, but it is A Psalm for the Wild Built and is a new series, Monk and Robot. It's been centuries since the robots of Earth gained self-awareness and laid down their tools. Centuries since they wandered en masse into the wilderness, never to be seen again. Centuries since they faded into myth and urban legend. I'm not gonna read all of this because my card's full and also, it's going on too long. Next, I've got The Haunting Season, Nine Ghostly Tales for Long Winter Nights by Sarah Collins, Bridget Collins, Natasha Pulley, Imogen Hermes Gower, Kira Millwood Hargrave, Andrew Michael Hurley, Jess Kidd and Elizabeth McNeil and is a um, set of spooky short stories. I will say that Sarah Collins, who's at the top of that list, I thought was the Sarah Collins that wrote Franny Langton. I don't think it is. I think it's a different Sarah Collins because that was what originally drew me into it. I will still read it because of Imogen Hermes Gower, Kieran Millwood Hargrave and also Elizabeth McNeil. I really enjoy um, them. Next I've got Threads of Power book one by V. Schwab, the start of a brand new trilogy called The Threads of Power which will be set in the same world as the Shades of Magic series featuring new leads plus the entire cast from Conjuring of Light. Sounds great. Um, I have heard rumours that it's coming out this year but apart from that I know nothing. And also the second Ninth House book is rumoured to be coming out in 2021 but heard nothing else um, from that Ninth House um, being by Lee Bardugo. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my super long video talking about new releases I basically know nothing about. If you did, let me know if you're excited for any of these. Also let me know if you're excited for other new releases that I didn't mention because I can always get behind more new releases that I won't have time to read. Thank you for watching my video. Have a good day. Have a nice life. Goodbye.